All so right. we are here with Ralph Olivier. How are you doing, sir? How's it going, guys? How's it going, Norman? I am super excited. Okay, so talk to us. So Elevate Climber students mm -hmm. and it has just landed a role. Yep. Tell me about it. Yeah, absolutely. So just landed a role maybe a month ago. Yep. As a account executive. At no! <laughs> yes, sir. So, you know, I just had <clears throat> I just had a journey. Actually, you know, I went to Elevate, yep. graduated, got placed in a job yep. um, with a Elevate partner, actually. OSP. OSP. So it was OSP. a BPR role. Um, and I just kind of, I just, I, I just didn't take anything for like granted, you know, mm -hmm. I just really, um, I had a, I had a full-time job while I was in Elevate, while I was doing OSP and I really got hired just because I was willing to communicate, first of all, over communicate mm -hmm. with OSP, like hey, I have a full-time job, but I'm willing to work here, here I'll be off. Like, let's work. Let me work here at this time. Wow. And eventually they hired me on like full-time. Wow. Because I was producing results in the time that I was, I had available to work, uh, but I made sure I communicated. So they understood my situation. They liked my results. They hired me on full time and I kept producing those results. Right. Um, Can we talk about that for a second? That's insane because we've had, and you've probably seen people in your network in life, et cetera. So many people that it, it really does drag on you you are in your full-time role trying to keep the bills paid trying to keep a roof over your head you know you're going to invest more energy time and money in a program like elevate and you know the outcomes out there but then you also in addition to that right as you graduated you're like okay i'm going to take this osp role the yep. sales role and i still think of it as a stepping stone but maybe i could do really well in and i think my point being is a lot of people are in those situations uh -huh. but that leads to like negative experiences or depression, you know, they're like, they feel like they can never get up underneath doing all of that and just constantly grinding. So yeah. how did, how did you take it differently? Was it like a mental conversation you were having that was like, no, I can keep doing this and build up momentum. Oh yeah. Everything. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. You had to, um, so I, first of all, when you said, you know, I understood mm -hmm. where I was going, so I had to understand it was an investment. Yeah. When you invest your work, we're, we're, a lot of times we're working for time and money, right? Mm -hmm. Wherever you invest your time, that's also, you have to think about it. You're investing your resources, your money, yeah. your energy. You can't get that back. So for yeah. me, um, I understood that, yeah, you know, it might be a lot of work, but I could see, the, I, I set a goal for myself. Mm -hmm. So I think goal setting is going to be extremely important. And I mean, yeah, there, it might be, a, it might seem like a lot of work, but honestly, I call it 1% progress every day, right? Nice. So you never try to look too far out. Once you have a goal set, scale back your focus to the day to day and what you can control for the day. Mm. Don't try to spread yourself too thin, thinking about a month from now, two months from now. Once you've already done it, scale back and try to focus on the steps. It's kind of yeah. like, you see a long step of stairs, um, yeah. you're going to climb it and then just say, okay, well, let me just focus back on my body and do one step at a time. So basically, instead of getting overwhelmed with the entire scenario or world that you're in, you try to clarify what exactly do I want out of this? What's my exact goal? Exactly. And then break that down so you feel like you're making improvements and just focus on the next step the in next front of you. Step. So for me, for example, I work... Uh, I had Wednesdays off, Wednesdays and Sundays off in my full-time okay. job. So at OSP, I would work full-time Wednesday. And then when I would get off from work, I would work like one hour. Because mm. I would tell them, hey, I'm getting off at this time for me to drive back home. You know, work with me. They're like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Okay, got you. So once I was able to be consistent, I got the full-time job. And then I was, that took me, I don't know how long, but that's when everything changed because I went from one position to now I'm in SAS and i I know how to apply myself. So now I can right. fully utilize that in one area. So that's, that's a big win for me. 
right? I don't have to worry about spreading myself thin anymore. So it's just, it's just finding where you're able to spread your wings. Like you have to get to the location where you can fly. Wow, that's beautiful. And a so, lot of these jobs are that specifically, right? This is where you're gonna make yourself be known. They call it into it. We call it, you know, build your brand. You have to build your own brand. Um, for so okay, well, let's clarify. So when you were enrolled at Elevate, what was the job? What was your full time job? So I have a sales background. Yeah. But the reason why I went to Elevate was because my there were there were layoffs, not even layoffs, the company shut down. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, what? Okay. That was the first time that happened to me. So I said, I'm def I'm gonna go into the most secure industry that I know. <laughs> Which is gonna be SaaS where I can go to any other SaaS company easily. Right. Right. Um so while I so a lot of things happened between me going from uh before elevate to elevate where I was working sales jobs i went to a startup um and then out of nowhere i moved out a job so i started working at costco literally at costco just to pay the bills i'm like you know what i'm gonna get this job pay the bills do the doing that yeah yeah and then, which costco is a great company by the way but i know it wasn't going to be really my path so um so as soon as i got into elevate i knew i was like you know what i don't even want to really i didn't even really want to be an sdr um i wanted to go i want to be an ae that was my goal actually my goal is enterprise ae Oof. So i'm still working through that goal i'm not done i'm yeah. just in between where i want to be right now yeah okay so take elevate I think it was when I looked at your resume and LinkedIn, I think I was looking at, there was a lot of mortgage experience there and mortgage sales. So that, I think that's the company that was shutting down. Is that right? No, it was. So I worked at, that was a, a Marisave mortgage. Right. I was an appointment setter there. I did amazing. Yeah. I was great. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was so good that I was like, you know what? I should go high ticket commission. <laughs> Ooh. So I went to this startup real estate company like tech ish company um high ticket deals everybody there was making great money and then three months in it shut down so technically i was better off at the other job yeah yeah that was the big risk it was a big risk and didn't work out for me but that's okay we move forward right yeah. you gotta fall forward so then you go into elevate and now you're training while you're in this full-time role Mm -hmm. and you're getting exposure to OSP, right? Yep. That employer. And then they offer you a full-time job. Full-time job. Right. And then how many months later do you become an account executive? Like, what's that timeline like? I think that was one month. <laughs> I think that was one month. That's insane. Yeah. Um. Honestly, with OSP, I started to really... I was really dedicated to my own goals. Yeah. And once you have that type of energy, yeah. um, you're going to produce not only results, but you're going to be able to drive yourself to wherever you want to go. So for example, OSP, um, I started writing some of the scripts. I started using those um, just to see if it will work, if I had skills, just to develop my skills. So I just started becoming very like self, uh, self kind of self-starting initiative uh, i'm initiative. seeing a lot of initiative you're taking initiative and i just started to go crazy on the applications nice i started to feel more um grounded yeah stable secure and i was like okay you know what but i really want to be at the ae role and i just you know i, I started to just do what we were taught in Elevate a little bit, just, uh, you know, it's really important for you, for you to know about outreach, just, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, just getting numbers, sometimes calling, yep. the emailing, um, do all, doing all of that. And then eventually I just started landing interviews after interviews after interviews. I actually had two offers. Jeez. Uh, back to back. So, and then I just chose into it. 
Well, let's talk about that for a second. So, uh, to start with with the skills, you're saying what you leveraging what you learn. So maybe you know you you you're evaluating Elevate. You think, okay, I'm gonna make this decision. I make this decision. What would you say has been you know if you can name a couple, that's fine, but at least one of the biggest like skills that you think you either learned or developed to the next level by going through the program and then getting into your experience with OSP. I would say Elevate is going to like feed whatever you decide to make it and whatever mm. you had inside of you as well, like what you, where you want to take your own personal skills. Right. Um, for me, it was the whole idea of like, you are, it, it kind of ushered me into the idea that, no, you're actually kind of a salesperson and these different companies want you. Mm. Why do they want you specifically? So it's like, okay, well, you're kind of like, a business at this point you're not but you kind of are a business as a yeah. salesperson so yeah. if you're a business then you yourself have to actually get your clients which are these companies right so if you, you open up a business you have to do outreach so it's just you have to change your thinking i think that's the biggest thing i took is changing my thinking from oh you know what i'm not an employee things are not just going to be handed to me in a way i never thought like that but maybe i did but now right. it's, it's just, it's more of an auto experience, right? Exactly. Of like, this is how I'm going to, I'm just, this is my role to play is I, I click apply in the job and I wait. No, no, no. And that, that has, you know, that actually, that actually, that initiative went over into my role with, with OSP because now I was like, you know, what else can I do? How can I be more proactive? I was like, okay, maybe I could try writing your script. Now it's like, now it trickles over into communication. Now wow. it was over into my job now as an AE. And That's then now, cool. now I'm thinking about, oh, maybe I can start a business. Right. Um, Cause I have, I have that platform, right. That it company. feels like it, it, it almost gave you permission to be the real you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I think it's not like you never had initiative. It's like you were just, you played a role in how you were looking for role for company, for opportunities. Exactly. Open my eyes to see how, my the initial that I already had that was inside of me, how did it match with where I wanted to go? Boom. And how could I bridge that gap? All right. So what would you say then? Because you had peers. Uh -huh. You've had peers in you in your class and your cohorts, some that were having the same momentum you do, mm -hmm. same energy, intensity, they're getting it, some who weren't. So what would you say are like some challenges folks, candidates have when they when we when we think about enrolling them and when they are enrolled? Um, and what would be advice you'd give to folks who are in the same point that you were, you know, last year or so when you were thinking about enrolling the same in the, at, at Elevate? Yeah, it's the same thing, you know, reverse engineer your goals. Mm. All right. So have clarity where you want to go. Like, it's fine that you want a job, but that might not be enough. Some people, you know, some people will get hired like this. Some people, maybe it takes longer. I would reverse engineer your goals. Um, once you have clarity, it's almost like everyone else responds to that. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so have clarity, reverse engineer it. I knew where I wanted to be at, and I'm still not done. Yeah. Well, once I was able to like um, say, oh, I want this type of job. Yeah. Maybe even this type of industry, like yep. what industry works best for me. And I just, I tried applying for this type of industry. I was like, oh, maybe I want healthcare. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? It's not right. I was applying for SDR roles, this BDR roles, but eventually I was like, you know what? No, I want this type of role. And once I connected to that, that is how it fell together. So I would say reverse engineer your goals and know what you want to get. It's really, it's really easy to get wrapped up in the whole like day-to-day, -day, task to task. Yeah. Um, and elevate and maybe even after. But once you have that clarity, that vision um understand that it's like job number two it's not job number one job number one is graduating elevate job number two is is not just getting a job it's how many interviews can you land right how tailored is your resume how can you tailor your resume to this specific job what steps did they teach for you to actually maximize your resume um following up uh, networking was big for me. That networking was huge for me. Um, on LinkedIn, just see when I hear you, I feel like that beginning of the conversation we talked about the different steps 
and focusing on the different steps. I feel like you've just outlined the steps. Oh, right. Okay. Step one, graduate. Step two, get the job. What does step two include or what's that second goal? It includes the follow up, includes the networking, it includes how much activity leads to X amount of interview, it includes that resume, it includes incorporating all the feedback that you've received on interview prep, etc. Yeah, interview interviewing is huge. It's like yeah. you can be great at your job, but you also have to be great at interviewing. Yeah. And, you know, what makes a great interview? Understand that. Mm. And then obviously what makes you great at your job, mm -hmm. that confidence. Um, so yeah, you have to reverse engineer and then it's just like sales, right? You're going to have metrics, your metrics here, are how many interviews can I have? How many can I close? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to cut it there because I just want to chat with you offline. This is absolutely Ralph Olivier, everyone. <laughs>